Hello beauties, and welcome back to the Bumpy Bones Locksport channel. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Yale Ironsides padlock. Um, and it's actually a really cool padlock. So this padlock dates back to about 1890. Uh, the patent for this was filed on January 1st, uh, 1890. Uh, so this lock it's, uh, was manufactured sometime between 1890 and 1900. So it's over 124 years old at this point. Uh, and that really kind of makes it kind of cool. Um, it is a common lock. Uh, so you can find this on eBay, Etsy. A lot of online antique uh, vendors have one of these locks. Uh, but the vendor I found online actually cleans up these locks and then sells them. Uh, so I got this for around 40 bucks, and in my book, that's that's a really good deal for the condition that this lock is in. Uh, so it's a cast iron body with a brass shackle, and it's a four-pin push cylinder lock. So what does that mean? Well, to unlock this, um, you take your key, which is just pretty much a flat piece of metal, uh, and you enter in, and rather than turning it, you have to kind of wiggle it and push it, and my hands are not really wanting to work with me today, so I do have a hard time with this part. Um, and for some reason, I'm not able to get it here. I had it oiled, and it's all nice. There we go. So you push it in, and that pushes the shackle out uh, so that you can rotate it. Um, now, in learning to pick this, I did make a mistake when I was uh, picking it and pushing it, so I did have to um, uh, cut a couple of pieces in the order to get it apart to fix it, but I'll talk about that when I actually do the gutting on this. Um, so it's a four-pin lock. Now, with this lock in particular, because it is so old and you do have a cast iron body, um, the holes in the body where your uh, key pins uh, or the driver pins went, one did kind of rust out a bit, so um, only three of the four pins are working on this one. Um, and let's talk about the key here real quick. So one thing that you notice with the push cylinder, so the key is just a flat piece of metal. There's no warding on it. When you look at a modern lock, and let me get my other Yale lock out here. So this is the Yale 500. You'll see that you have a warding on it. So that's kind of one of the big differences between these vintage uh, padlocks and the modern padlocks is you get the warding, which increases your security um, and allows you to do different keys. And then you have the pin cylinder locks here, which you just rotate to unlock. Um, so, all right, so let's go ahead and pick this open. And you do use a little bit of a different technique when you're picking this open. It is similar with other pen cylinders, so we're going to raise the key pens. Uh, but when you're picking a lock regularly, normally you take a turning tool, you put it into the keyway, you apply pressure to tension it, then you pick it, then you rotate the uh, cylinder or the plug can't do with this what lock because it's push. So what we need to do is let's go ahead and throw this in our vise. And I'm going to try to do this so that you everybody can see it. Let me angle this just a little bit more. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use my screwdriver here for tension. And so what I'm going to do is I put it through the shackle here and then use this as a lever to apply tension. And just to make things a little bit easier for me with this video, I was going to use my lock law tool. And so I am going to use my monkey paw. Uh, so this is the uh, 0 0.025 inch long uh, hook monkey paw. And so let's go ahead and uh, get this open here. So I'm going to just pick this like a regular lock while using this to tension the shackle. Um, and so one is springy. Uh, okay, two I'm getting good tension on. All right, so 
I hope that kind of came through because what's really nice about this lock is it does have mushroom pins in it, which I was really surprised. So you saw that the shackle came out a little bit. And so this did, it's, indent, it's indented now. So that means I'm in the false set. So I'm going to go to pin one. And as I lift pin one, I can feel it pulling back on the screwdriver here. So I'm going to just release a little bit of pressure. And let's set pin one. All right, so pin one set, and you notice now I'm deeper. And this is actually a really good demonstration on what, uh, on how spool and mushroom pins react while you're picking, uh, because it's the same exact uh, feel as when you're doing uh, regular pin cylinders or modern pin cylinders. But what you're doing, rather than it going back like this, it's just going side to side. So I'm going to get number three here. So um, number four on this lock is the one that is, isn't working all the way. So let's see, I'm almost there. There we go. All right, so now the other thing that you want to do when you're picking these locks, you want to make sure that you rotate the shackle as you're pulling it out. The reason is, is because it's a push cylinder. If you keep this vertical and you pull it out, you risk dropping the key pins into the holes that it's not supposed to go into. And that's what happened with me. And I'm a newbie when it comes to this stuff. So I resorted to doing a little bit of a destructive method to try to fix it when I didn't need to. Um, but I'll talk about that as I um, got this. So let me go ahead and take this out of the vise. So as you can see, we're open now, so I can rotate this around all the way. So now, how do we gut this lock? Well, this is a cool lock to gut. Uh, and it's actually easier than it looks to gut. So all you have to do is actually remove this cap here. Now, I'm going to use um, some pliers here to do that. So I'm just going to grip it. And I don't have tools that won't mark up the brass. Um, I'm actually probably going to invest on some uh, tools that will do, do that. So, but again, this is a common lock. I mean, clean, serviced, and all that was 40 bucks. <laughs> so, uh, I'll put a link to the seller that I got uh, down in the comments. Now, what I am going to do as well, just because it is, oh, there is rust in here and all of that. So, I'm just going to throw some gloves on at this point. All right, let's go ahead and screw this off. So when you look down in here, you're going to notice I threw in some wiring to hold that in place so that this doesn't come out. Normally what happens is on this cap here, there is a uh, plug on the bottom of this that goes into the hole on the clip here. And that's what holds that in place to hold your shackle in place. Um, but I decided to kind of go through some destructive means trying to fix this not knowing what i'm doing so um i just kind of went about it that way so let me pull out um this wiring that i did in here and i jammed that in there really good i wasn't planning on doing the gutting video uh but i figured hey why not all right so now that i got that loose can i pull this out no not yet i may have to cut some of this stuff out because I jammed this in there really good. I did use a soft wire. There we go. Now I can get it. All right. So now yeah, you can see now the shackle wants to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and take my plug here. And the pins, the driver pins, are back in here. So with my plug, I'm just going to make sure that I have it um, like this. So that it will keep the driver pins in place. Uh, but my key pins are on the inside of the shackle, so I just want to make sure I have that pointed upwards. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see the shackle is actually the pin cylinder as well. So you got four pins. Uh, so pins one, two, three, and four. So I'm just going to drop these real quick. These are just pretty standard pins. Let me actually grab my covert instrument pinning tray here. All right, so... There's pin one. Oops. Pin 
two, pin three, and then pin four. All right, so we got our pins. Um, and so you can see it's a pretty simple design. You know, we've got this clip here, which goes all the way into the other hole there. So that clip actually goes into this little divot here, and that's what holds your shackle in place. So let's go ahead and remove our driver pins. Let me get a pair of pinning tweezers here. I have them buried in my... Of course, I have to have things piled on top of them. All right, so... Actually, I want to go the other way here because pin one's down at the bottom. So there's pin one, pin two, pin three, and I can't get pin four out because um, it is rusted in there pretty well. I'm not sure if I can get the video here to really show it nicely. Let me see if I can get that. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, let me come in through the other angle here. Um, and let me see if I can get this focus. So yeah, right in there is pin four. Um, I gotta look up some techniques to see if I can. But you can see that clip here that goes back and forth. So um, you know, in the future, if I got another one of these, I now know that if I did um, repeat that mistake, um, I can easily just pick it back open without having to destroy that. But, you know, I kind of bought this for a shelf piece and all that. So it, it works just well with what I did there. But what's really cool with this lock, and I was not expecting these, were these uh, mushroom pens. Um, I was not expecting that in this lock. Uh, some videos that I've seen were, you know, you get some serrated pins in there. Um, you'll notice that the pens are different lengths, and so that does actually um, uh, add a little bit of a different feel to everything and all that. Um, and the springs are pretty standard, too. Um, if I grab this, let's pull one out. Yeah, as I said before, this is a 100-year-old lock, 124 year old, years old, and everything is in really good condition with the exception of just that fourth pen. You know, I would say these are definitely the original um, pens that came in it based off the look. Uh, they don't look new, they don't look um, replaced or anything like that, so... So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. That was a really cool lock to uh, kind of figure out, get open, and uh, kind of pick. I got a couple of other vintage locks coming through that I might be doing videos in the future with. And I hope everyone has a beautiful day. So if you like the video, do feel free to like and comment. And everyone have a wonderful day.